We've spent the past couple of videos discussing some basics about the Cycles Render Engine, Cycles Materials, and stuff like that. So I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about lighting and cycles, different methods we can use, different little tricks, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and switch this from Blender Render to the Cycles Render Engine. Press Shift A, and under Mesh, let's add ourselves a circle we're going to use for a ground. Quickly double tap Space to bring up our tool settings, which is a menu that we can use to adjust whatever object we just added or the last tool we just used or anything like that. And let's change this fill type to Ingon. And then so we can press S to scale. And now we've got this kind of just simple kind of ground here to use. Let's click on this default cube, press G to grab, middle mouse to constrain. And under material, I'm just going to press new here. So by default in cycles, this gives us this basic material with a diffuse node on it, which is just basically lets us control color. So if you notice here, we're in under the surface menu, it says diffuse here. This lets us change the color of the material that we're using. If we press Alt Z here in the 3D view, this will put us into material viewport shading so we can actually see this kind of stuff. But if we switch over to the node editor for a second, we could change this object into something that glowed that emitted light by adding a emission shader node in place of this diffuse node. But there is a quicker, lazier way to do this, and that is just as soon as you add the material in cycles, you can switch this from where it says surface from diffuse to emission here. Uh, so now if we press our render preview button, uh, this material will be emitting light, although we can't really see it that much because it's not that strong. So we can increase this strength, and you can see as I do, it gets really brighter on that ground there. Also, if under lights, we go ahead and turn scene brightness all the way down to zero. This lets us see the effects of that a lot more. So I could scale this, maybe tap W a few times to give it some smoothing, make it look kind of a point of light here. I could press D to duplicate this, middle mouse to constrain. And if I were to change the color of this material right now, it would change the color for both of those. So what I can do is under material here, press this plus button, and that will turn this material over here to the right into its own new separate material so I can change the settings on it. So I'll press plus there and I could change this to like green or something. Meanwhile, this one's still orange. Of course, the strength is really high, so let's see that orange unless we go down. But we can make it darker. All right, so if we press render preview now, we got this light over here. And we got this green light over here. Okay, so that's one way to deal with lighting in cycles. You just use objects, you know, whatever shape they are, and just manually have them have materials emitting light. And of course, increasing the strength is one way to make them brighter. However, physically making them bigger also will output different amounts of light. So that's a little easier to see if I were to say Shift A and under Mesh, add a monkey head here, press W to give it some smoothing maybe rotate this around, drop it to the ground here, duplicate it a few times, and then I'll just shift select all of these, and I think I'll press T to bring up my tool shelf, press mirror, and then press Y here, which will mirror those, and just so we've got something down there for these lights to be affecting. Okay, so if I press render preview now, you can see the bigger I make these objects with materials that have emission nodes on them, the more light they're going to put out. So there's actually a really easy setting we can use to hide the actual object that the material is using just so we get the effects of the light. And that is located in the object properties, the little orange cube of the properties panel. So if we click on that, when you're in cycles render engine, you'll have this cycles settings menu available for the object and you if you just turn off camera for that object so we this little cube here with a bunch of subsurface smoothing on it now we, we can see the effects of that light still but the object itself will be gone so there's a lot of fun things you can do with this for instance we could you know add an emission shader node material to like this Suzanne head and then have light coming out in all the directions that is the monkey head but have the monkey head not show up and so on. So I could do that for this other one. I could click on it and turn off ray visibility for the camera. And we'll have the same thing going on here.
that's one way to, to deal with lighting. Another way is we can actually use the traditional lamps uh, found in our ad menu. If you press shift aid or double right click to bring up your ad menu. And these work fairly similar to just regular blender render uh, lamps. So say I press shift A under lamp here, I add a point lamp. This is gonna kind of do a similar thing of what we just did of creating an object, scaling it, adding that material, and then turning off this camera setting under ray visibility. It's gonna do a similar thing. So if we press render preview, click on this lamp here, and of course we'll have settings over here. Uh, you'll notice the difference in these settings as opposed to blender render lamp settings is you have an option for nodes. And so you can control the color there. See, we just turned that blue. You can see that blue light now uh, affecting moving over. And then of course strength, which typically the strength on a lamp need to be a lot higher than the strength you have on materials on objects, such as uh, these cubes that we're using as physical lighting. So the material node on here, if I click over here, is only like 74, but it's producing a lot of light. Whereas this at 100 is not producing nearly as much. So these values typically need to be a lot higher to be effective. But I could duplicate that, change its color to something, maybe pink, what have you. We could add a spotlight here, which of course behaves similarly to the spotlight in Blender Render. Let's go ahead and pause this render preview. And I'm gonna shift select all the previous lights I was using, including the little physical based objects that we were using. Let's just X delete all those. Now we'll just see the effects of this spotlight here. And I could click back on that so we can get back to its settings. And we can increase its strength to say 555. Under spot shape, we can control the blend of the actual uh, shape there. And we can increase the size of that. Unfortunately, when we press show cone, we can only see that visually in the 3D view. It's not gonna render as it actually will render if we we're in Blender Render. So to get this to show up, you would need to actually turn on volume in the world settings. So under volume here, we could add volume scatter here. We would have to decrease the density here to say 0 0.01 or something like that. And now you can actually see the cone part of that spotlight there, which is pretty sweet. Of course, this will not only work with spotlights, but of course, anything using an emission node, such as those other lamps we're using or the objects we first created, and so uh, you would just want to slowly, um, you know, mess with that density value. So maybe from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. Mm, let's see, maybe 0 0.1. How about that? That works a bit better, but we'll need to increase the strength of this lamp, of this node, I think. So from 555 to maybe 1500. Let's try that. There we go. That's getting better. Let's try 2000. There we go. So we actually are able to see this nice shape of this cone here as I move this through these very guilty Suzanne head criminals. But that about wraps us up for this one. Obviously, there's a lot more interesting things we can do with lighting with the Cycles Render Engine. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.